How do you sell to a complete stranger, somebody you've never met before, and getting them to buy your product or service? Is there some kind of a secret trick? Do you have to become the salesman that you don't want to be, coming across as too salesy? Or is there an ethical way to sell your products and services that isn't some secret trick, but is in reality a strategy and one that's repeatable, one that you can do over and over again, not only sell to a stranger once, but have them become a customer and sell to them multiple times. In today's episode, I'm gonna talk about how you can create a customer for a lifetime. Welcome to another episode of eCreate Biz, where we talk about what it's really like to navigate building a real business. Thanks for joining me today. I'm your host, Caleb Becker. Real quick, I got a question to ask you. Have you ever sat down to write an email, to stare at a blank screen, to literally sitting there with no inspiration? Well, that's called writer's block. And it's not very fun. It's not really a medical condition, but it sure feels like one. That's why I'm enthused to share something with you to help you next time you're staring at a blank screen that you can gain inspiration quickly and you can become more productive. A 27 email prompt template that you can literally take any one of these 27 prompts and you copy and paste it inside of chat GPT. And in a matter of seconds, it'll spit up some really cool content and get you moving very quickly. It's designed to save you a lot of time. So depending on what kind of email you're gonna write, there's enough options for you to choose from. Now you can get this guide completely for free. It's my gift to you and it's designed to help you. All you gotta do is go to ecreatebiz.com forward slash prompts to get your guide or simply click on the description below this episode. And like I said, it's designed to remove writer's block. It's designed to help you to become more productive. Again, you can get that over at ecreatebiz.com forward slash prompts. All right, without any further delay, let's get started. We live in a world where we are offered products all the time, but there's always this push for products and buying more. And I remember a time going to a car dealership with my family and driving on the parking lot just to kind of browse around to see what they had. And sure enough, before we got very far in, we had a salesman right there standing next to us, wanting to be our friend, wanting to show us the the latest and greatest. And I had to ask myself the question, was he really trying to be my friend or was he just trying to make his sales commissions for that week? And I really think it was the later. I wasn't really anything to that person. He might've remembered my name for that moment. I don't remember his name, but I do remember how he came across. He came across somebody that I wouldn't want to meet again. Matter of fact, I don't think I ever went to that car dealership again for anything, I just drove by not wanting to turn in. So is that how we go about selling our products and services? Is becoming this sleazy salesman that is just out there to make our commissions? Or do we have the opportunity to build a trusted relationship? And if you think about it, if you're the one being sold to, wouldn't you rather buy a product because you trusted in the process and not feel like you've been sold to? That's how I am. And I'm guarantee that's how you are. And when we as business owners back up from our own products and services and our own income goals that we have, we stand back and realize that we're also a consumer. And when we make purchasing decisions, we make them with our emotions. Majority of our purchasing decisions are made with our emotions. And our customers buy this in the same way. They use their emotions to purchase. 
So how do we go from being the stranger to earning the trust and deserving the sale? Is there a way to do this? Well, I'm happy to tell you there is, and it's called the follow-up framework. And the follow-up framework consists of two components, which is the first one is acquisition. The second one is relationship. I'm going to categorize that customer's journey into four parts, which is a stranger, a lead, a customer, and a lifetime customer. And each one of these categories has the repeatable framework of acquisition and relationships. All right, so let's go into the very first one. Back to the story of driving onto the car dealership and having, having a complete stranger walk up to me and introducing himself. I'm a stranger to him. He's a stranger to me. And in any part of the process that we have, that we meet people online, um, inside of your business, that it's that same step. There's a stranger. What are you going to do with this stranger? And what we need to be thinking about at this point is not the sale. We cannot be thinking about the sale because if we do, that's where the sleazy salesy comes from. We need to think about acquisition at this point. Can we take this complete stranger and acquire them into becoming a lead? Go from stranger to a lead. So we're going to be working on acquisition at this point. The definition of a lead is somebody that you can contact, somebody that you're given permission to contact. Okay, so back in that setting, it would be a business card he'd give to me and I would in turn maybe give him my phone number and that would determine now as a lead. In the online business space, we use something that we call a lead magnet. It's something of value, a free ebook, a PDF, a planner, a chart, some statistics, something of value that we will give in exchange for an email. And when we get that email, the person who gave that email is giving you permission to email them with more content, with more value. And that's what we determine as a lead. So the question is, well, when should you start selling? Well, that's when I come back to how do you like to be sold to? And when you think about it that way, how do I like to be sold to? Am I going to go from being a lead to now pulling out my credit card? Or am I going to take a bit more time before I do that? And that's, that's the steps we've got to walk into. So now let's go into the second part, the second category, which is the lead. Now we went from being a stranger to now being a lead. All right. So this lead, now we need to start using the second part of the framework, which is the relationship. Now we need to build a relationship with this lead. We need to offer value to this lead. We need to be able to make sure that they feel like that we're somebody they can trust, that the information we're giving them is from a trusted source, that we care about not wasting their time. We care about what their needs and their wants are. And you can give them that value. This salesman at the car dealership was only concerned about his commissions. That was it. Wasn't concerned about me. Only concerned about his commissions. And by the way, that salesman never captured my information. He never got my name or my phone number. He was hoping for a sale. And that was it. Completely playing the numbers game. But if you're going to want to build a real business and you're going to want to bring in and sell to customers and sell to more customers, we know we can't do it that way. We got to treat them like the human beings that they are. So that relationship is building trust. All right. When we have their trust, now they move into a subcategory of this lead category, which is a warm lead. They become now not just any old lead. Now it's a warm lead. Now, when they see your emails come through or they get a text from you or they might get a phone call from you, they're fine with that. They're okay with that. They think that you're the expert in that particular space. They're looking to you as being the guide. All right. So now we have to take this warm lead 
And now we need to work on the set on one of the on the first category um, on the first framework. And now we need to work on that first framework, which is the acquisition. So we went from acquisition in the beginning, from the stranger to becoming a lead, and then we went went into become working on the relationship to turning them into a warm lead. And now we're back into the acquisition process again. Okay. So we're always going to be revolving back between acquisition and relationships. So now we're into the acquiring side again. Now, now, how can we take the person who trusts us now to offering a product that they're going to purchase? So we're going to be working on this acquiring. Now we're going to be acquiring the right to have them become our customers. And we're going to do this by offering them a product, a product that we feel like would serve them really well. Not any old product, but a product that we feel like will serve them well. And then when they walk into that phase of becoming a customer, we follow up again. I just want to pause for a second to say thank you for subscribing to this channel. And I really appreciate your comments. And I'm told that when you like and subscribe to this content, that it helps the algorithm to recommend this to other people. Let's jump back in where we left off. Now we move them into that third category, which is the customer. Once they purchase, they are now your customer. Not only do they trust you, they trusted you enough to pull out their credit card and purchase a product that you've offered to them. Congratulations. That is an impressive step to have achieved. And I think that's something that you should celebrate when you get to this point. And however, as cool as that is, you're not done yet. The follow-up continues. We have to continue the process. When they become your customer, now we go into the second part of the framework, which is the relationship. Now we're going to be continue to serve them in a relationship. And the reason why we're going to do this is we're trying to turn them from just any old customer into a lifetime customer. A lifetime customer is the goal. And that's exactly what it means. That means that they're going to be your customer for life. How cool is that? It's a lot easier to sell to a customer that's like your customer for life than it is to sell to a stranger. You kind of see how this works? Now that when we're in this phase, it's the relationship has been built from a customer into becoming a lifetime customer. And now at, when we're in this part, we're, we're, call, we're, we're talking to them by first name. They're very familiar with what we're offering them. They realize that when we sold them a product that they trusted us in that. And now we can move into offering them products that will bring more value to them. And that's the beautiful part about this step is that you are in this trusted relationship as you interact with that customer. And when you visualize this process, you start to realize that it doesn't make sense to sell a high-priced product to a stranger that there actually is a strategy you have to work at. There actually is a process that you need to follow. And like I said, there is no secret trick to this. We have to come right back down to the part of us being humans first. How do we engage when we are looking at buying a product? That's really the foundation that we can work with. But just to recap on what I've talked about is the follow-up framework. The follow-up framework is we have four categories of the customer's journey. That's a stranger, to a lead, to a customer, and to a lifetime customer. And you just keep, re you just keep repeating the two-step framework depending on what step you're in. Are you into acquiring as a new lead? Or are you acquiring into a customer? Or are you acquiring into a lifetime customer? And then we look at the relationships as being the vehicle that helps them take a step into the acquisition. So I just want to encourage you to look at your process. And if you don't have a process like this, I strongly encourage you to develop one. I hope this has encouraged you to look at how you're coming across to your customers. And if this has encouraged you to improve your sales process, then I would feel like that this episode has done a great work. I wish you all the best 
Thanks for joining me today, and I will see you again on the next one.